Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Uh, this picks up on the video that I released last week where we talked about Argo CD. We went over the architecture, some of the components, uh, some of the theory behind how continuous delivery through Argo CD works. Uh, today we'll have a quick demo, uh, a quick hands-on. We'll install Argo CD, we'll run some tests, and then we'll cover some areas that we're gonna dive into some more specific details in future videos. Uh, but the intent of today's video is just to give you a quick look at the capabilities of Argo CD. Uh, so with that uh, being said, I have created a gist for you to follow along. I'll leave the gist in the video description below. Um, and as always, if there's any questions that you have, please uh, feel free to leave some uh, questions in the comments. And if you find this type of content valuable, I encourage you to like the channel, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, it helps get the uh, the word out. So without further ado, let's get started. So the prerequisites are that you have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. Um, I do have a, uh, a single node cluster. It's uh, running uh, Rancho's RKE2, but any cluster should suffice. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, install Argo CD itself. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Um, it involves uh, two steps. So the first step is we need to create the namespace, uh, and then we need to apply the manifests. So if we copy this command here, we can create the Argo CD namespace, and then we can simply apply the manifests. So this will go through, it'll install all the required uh, components. So the deployment, network policy, services, uh, cluster rule bindings, bindings, etc. And by default, um, this will install into the Argo CD namespace. So if we take a look at the, uh, the pods that are running in the Argo CD namespace, we should see what's been installed. Okay, great. So it looks like the pods have started coming up. Uh, as we described in the previous video, uh, you see things like the repo server, uh, the actual Argo CD server itself, the DEX server, uh, and we'll dive into each of these components in a lot more detail in future videos. Uh, so let's give this a couple more seconds. Uh, we need the Argo CD server to, uh, to start up. So if we take a look. Okay, great. So we can see that everything is now up and running. So the next thing that we need to do is by default, Argo CD deploys uh, its server as a cluster IP service. Uh, since this is just a quick demonstration, we don't have an ingress. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and change the service type to node port. Uh, I've left a command here in the gist that will uh, allow you to do that. So if we copy this and apply this command, and if we take a look at the services that are now running in the Argo CD namespace, you'll see that this Argo CD server has now changed from cluster IP to type node port. So what this basically means is that we'll now be able to access the Argo CD server uh, using the node port that's been specified. So in order to access the Argo CD server, it'll be the IP address of the virtual machine uh, with either one of these ports. So if you would like to access it uh, over HTTP, we could hit uh, 31899. Uh, and for HTTPS, it would be on port 32041. So since this is just a quick demo, we'll copy this port and then we'll enter that into the browser here. So my virtual machine's IP address is 244, and we can specify that port. And this is quite normal since it is a uh, an out of the box installation. Argo CD deploys with a self signed certificate. So we'll go ahead and accept this. In future videos, we'll deploy an ingress. We'll use um, something like Let's Encrypt with Cert Manager. Uh, to get a certificate uh, that we can map to a domain name that we specify. So we can see that the Argo CD server is now available. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to fetch the password. By default, Argo CD creates a secret uh, by the name of Argo CD initial admin secret. Uh, we need to fetch that and uh, base64 decrypt it. I've left a, a command here again in the gist that makes it easy. So if we copy this, and we paste this, this is the, the password that is been assigned for the administrative user. So let's copy this password 
and then we can sign in as user admin. Okay, so now that we've signed in, uh, there's nothing that's been configured. So the only thing that is set up out of the box is the local Kubernetes cluster that Argo CD was deployed to is defined as the default cluster. There are no applications. Uh, there are no repositories been configured yet. Uh, there's lots of different configurations that we can go through and set up in the future. But for today's video, there's only two things that we need to do. So the first is we need to connect to a repository that hosts our deployment manifests. Uh, I've created a, uh, a demo repo. Uh, I, again, I'll leave the link to this in the video description below. It's a very simple deployment. Um, it just starts up an Nginx deployment, and then we tie that together with a service. So what we need to do is we need to copy the repo URL. It's a public uh, repo, so we're not going to require any authentication. Uh, and then we simply connect to a repo. We're going to connect via HTTPS. It's a Git repo. Uh, we're going to connect to the default project. So Argo CD has the ability to group things into various projects. Uh, for now, we're just going to use the default project. We're going to specify the repository URL. And since it's public, we don't need to specify any usernames or passwords. So once we connect, we can see that uh, the connection is successfully established. And the final thing we need to do is create an application. So to create an application, there's a variety of different methods. For today's quick example, we're just going to use the user interface interface to create that example. So create an application. We can give it a name. So we can say demo engine X. We're going to also deploy this into the default project name. We're going to leave the sync policy to manual. I want to show you uh, how Argo CD uh, can change the state to match what it is that you've defined in your manifests. And in order to do that, um, you know, we would need to enable the sync policy to be automatic. Uh, but to test, we're going to leave it with manual and then we'll go ahead and change that to automatic uh, a little later on in the video. Then we need to specify the source repository URL. This is the repo that we just added a few minutes ago. We're just going to look at the head of the branch. And the path is the location inside of the repository where the deployment manifests exists. So if we go back to the repo, we can see I've created a folder called Quick Start Demo. And inside Quick Start Demo is where the deployment and the service YAMLs exist. So we need to specify quick start demo as our path. And then we need to tell it where to deploy this application. So in this case, we're just going to deploy it to the local Kubernetes cluster, and we're going to deploy it to the default namespace. Now, if you have nested manifests, you can enable things such as uh, directory uh, recurse, but we're going to keep this very simple. We have two deployment files. They both exist within the top level directory of Quick Start Demo. So if we click Create, you'll see that the application gets created inside of Argo CD, but it's out of sync. So this means that we've now registered the application with Argo CD, but it hasn't achieved the desired state. If we go back and look at the cluster, and we take a look at the pods in the default namespace, we'll see that nothing has actually started yet. In order for Argo CD to sync the desired state out of our GitHub repository, we can manually sync. So if we click on sync, and we'll synchronize both uh, services here, we'll see that it's going through uh, its sync process, it's pretty quick, and now everything is healthy. So if we click into that application, we can take a look. So we now see that there is a uh, an Nginx service, the deployment, um, some replica sets, uh, and then finally the pod. So if we go back and take a look at the actual Kubernetes cluster now, we can see that there's a single copy of the Nginx pod that has been started. Now, I mentioned earlier that the whole purpose for Argo CD is to make sure that our deployed state always ma uh, matches what we've defined through GitOps. In this example, we've deployed Nginx using one replica set. 
but we've got our policy right now set to manual. So if we were to, to go if we were to go into the Kubernetes cluster and scale up that nginx to something like three replicas, let's see what happens. So if we go back into the gist, I've left a command here um, that shows you how to scale up uh, quickly. So we're going to scale up to three uh, replicas, and then if we do a kubectl get pods we'll now see that there are three instances or rather three pods of nginx that have been started and you can see that it scaled up two additional pods just a few seconds ago so let's go back and see what's happening in the user interface so we can now see that the application has gone out of sync and the reason that it's gone out of sync is because it no longer matches what we defined in our github repository so if we click on this we'll see that there's now three instances of nginx that are running and the reason that it's out of sync is if we click on this little yellow icon we can take a look at the desired uh, sorry the the difference between the the manifest so let's have a look at a, a compact diff so we can see that our desired state is to have one replica but the current state is three because we scaled it up manually and this is why it's out of sync so from here, we can actually go ahead and just sync this one particular uh, deployment, or we can sync the entire application. So let's go up top and just sync the entire application. So if we hit sync, we'll now see that two of those pods have disappeared. That's because it's been scaled back down to one replica set. And we can validate that by going back into the Kubernetes cluster, taking a look, and we can indeed see that it has now scaled back down to one replica. So that's a very high level of how Argo CD works. Again, we didn't get too much into the details. Uh, we covered the installation, some quick examples of how Argo CD has the ability to maintain state between what has been specified declaratively in your GitOps repository and how you can enable uh, sync and auto sync to keep those repositories um, in that desired state. So in future videos, we'll dive into uh, a lot more detailed examples. For example, out of the box, uh, Argo CD pulls every three minutes. Uh, maybe we want to send a notification to our Argo CD instance as soon as a change has been made. So we'll configure a webhook. As I mentioned earlier, we'll get into some uh, ingress configurations. We'll use a certificate. We'll set up some notifications. So if there's any changes that happen uh, to the state of our application, maybe we want to set, set up a Slack notification. Um, and there's a lot of uh, other features that Argo CD uh, can enable. So I'm gonna wrap that video up, or uh, rather this video up. Uh, if you liked what you had to see, please subscribe, um, like this video. Um, so you get notified when we dive into some of the more uh, deeper sessions around Argo CD. Thank you very much.